Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. We have a liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. One full fan for man. One giant wing for man. This chunky little gem is one that picked up Academy Games, one small step. Um, I have an awful soft spot for space and for space exploration games. Kind of real world space. I mean, obviously, we play lots of spacey games as it is. Um, most recent one for me, I think, was Space Race in terms of kind of real-ish, sort of. Um, this one I knew about, but I didn't actually put it, I can't remember why, but didn't pay much attention. Landed in Bob's uh, doorstep and he went, there you go, have a look at that, do a wee unboxing for that and see what you think. Got a couple of Academy games. Um, some of them are what I think might be considered highbrow. And I'm fortunate enough that I've got a couple of the ones that are midbrow, so I can cope with them. Um, this one, I hope, and falls into that category. Haven't looked at it, haven't sort of googled it or anything else, so this is kind of all nice and raw for me. So this is really, at the minute, just intended to be a little look inside the box and see what we get. Of course it's an advert. And why wouldn't you? Because they've got, they've got lots of other lovely games. That's one of the ones I particularly enjoyed, 1775. Real soft spot for that one. Uh, I know that I know a few of the chaps really like that one there. Um, Conflict of Heroes, a couple of them played. I touched a bit it. The others sort of play the more sort of war-based ones like the Conflict of Heroes and the ones that derive from that. They're, they're far too advanced for me. So we have a rather large rule book. I've got our little contents list all there, all our little icons and whatnot can explain to us straight off the bat. And then we go into our layout now again, pretty much all the Academy Games stuff and any rule book it's really doing its job these days is doing this nice setup diagram they're giving you nice explanations everyone i'm loving this floating effect here this is particularly nice this is this is going one step above and beyond the call in my humble opinion we've kind of got these uh, the numbers floating above everything um that just tickled me so we do seem to have a fairly hefty rule book as one would expect now what i what I'm aware of, you're playing the USSR and America. You can play it four player where two are America, two are USSR, USA. Um, not sure if there's, I'm not even sure if there's a solo mode or anything like that in this one. There's designer's notes, nice little diagram there of uh, the control room at NASA. So, seems fairly detailed. There's a lot of writing right off the bat. This is this is one that I think will possibly be passing the rule book to Roger or Andrew Barr and going, learn this for us and then teach us symptoms how to play. Because um, I don't know, I've just reached a point where sometimes with a rule book, you know, kind of reading it, slowly your chin's getting closer to your chest. And learning a rule book takes two or three days or evenings. Um, I've just got two into the way of playing simple games, that's probably my problem. Despite the fact there's quite a few that aren't simple lurking behind me. But anyway, I think we're at about 20 pages, 23 pages, 25, 26 pages, 27 is the reference on the back. But some of that does seem to be sort of background notes explanation and uh, sort of the, the real story is tucked in there as well and lots of sort of expansions on the cards and clarifying what they mean so probably sitting there around yeah probably around about 19 pages of, of hard rules so to speak plop that down there 
we have player reference cards, two of, and they are of course double-sided as you would expect as well. So we've got a beginner's side there, nice, and then we've got the advanced, and there, there is quite a difference there between beginners and advanced in terms of the actions that you'll be able to take and what they expect you to learn to be able to do. So needless to say, we'll be starting here for a couple of games, I would say. This is the Earth Overlay. Now, one thing I did click, there's the board, and then again, this I think is the simplified startup Earth. So this will go on for your first couple of games to get your head around things and uh, keeps it a bit more straightforward. Got our sheets of tokens. Wow, that's that's fairly thick card there. Fairly thick card stock. And uh, nice straightforward tokens. They're not cluttered. The graphics are fairly minimalistic, but they seem to convey what they need to convey. Got a second sheet there. Oh, and they are double-sided as well. Third sheet. Ooh, lots of tokens. There we go. So, quite impressed. That's, that's a very heavy, very heavy card. Then we've got a really big board. Uh, we'll take a look at the board separately, I think. We've our deck of cards. I'm not going to open these. I always feel, I really love it that the guys, girls, whenever they get new games, they're quite happy to throw them at me or whoever else to do a little unboxing video. But I always feel kind of bad throwing open card packs, especially when there's nothing to particularly keep the cards together. I would imagine, given everything else I'm aware of with the camera games, these would be a fairly good card stock. It's a fairly hefty deck of cards, and they do look fairly solid there. Nice uh, graphics on that one. And again, we're seeing all these uh, sort of icons that relate to in-game effects. So I'm imagining that we're going to be sort of the space race. So we're going to be developing different technologies and researching different technologies as we try to achieve the goal of getting a man on the moon and the, the other little sort of achievements, man in orbit, stuff like that there. We have two little bags of meeples. I've uh, got a couple of cubes in there, a couple of little sort of scientist dudes. We've got the headset on one. We've got the clipboard and glasses on the other. We've got a repeat of that in here. I'm going to guess two player, and then when you go up to four player, you're probably going to need the extras. We have some bespoke dice. So there'll be a bit of chance coming in in terms of what resources you're going to be getting each turn when you play. We have our two command boards. So there we are, sequences of play, one again for the Soviet Union and one for the USA. They're not dull-sided, because they look like they would make good like uh, Apollo lunch towers or something on the backs of those. And we have a little tiny deck, hazard cards or whatever else. Hard worker, you may spend a personal resource to use both actions when the worker uses an earth space. Okay, so not a very busy box in terms of bits, I suppose once we get these tokens all punched. Observation that does strike me, though that's a really sturdy, that's a very sturdy insert, um, nothing comes as standard to keep all these tokens in. So that's something to bear in mind that whenever these are punched, um, that's going to be a lot of different tokens rattling around down in there. They're going to need a home. So you're going to need some baggies or some little boxies or whatever. Uh, this board does appear to be huge. Quite nice. Uh, sort of a nice matte finish to it. There's light bouncing off it here, but even on camera I'm seeing that the glare isn't too bad, so it's keeping that down. We have the homes for our various trackers and the decks of cards. So it's all obviously going to be self-contained on the board. It is a one-sided board. Oh, it's only a, a four-way. Uh, we'll get a little picture of this up on screen for you as well. Because that doesn't really do it justice. There's the Earth, and that's as I thought. This is the, the complicated Earth map. Um, and then that overlay. 
will go on for basic play. So you're starting off with a slightly simpler setup there. But yeah, I mean, looking at this, and again, without having done much of that homework, we can see that there's a track sort of to develop uh, the achievement of Earth orbit, and then we've got stages of the rocket as it's making its way, uh, the journey to the moon, and then obviously moon landing as well. Not an overly complicated board. It seems a fairly straightforward board, some worker placement elements, bit of progress tracker. There's a progress tracker line for the Soviets, a progress tracker line for the USA, and there's some card placement. Um, so and then obviously you're going to be placing cards in your own workstation. So initial feel there is that's that's not going to be too complicated. A game, I think. You're going to be rolling the dice, obviously, but my ticking to get some sort of resources. You're going to be placing your meeples on here at the different stations to activate the effects. Those effects are going to tie in with cards that you're going to have or cards that you want to acquire. And those cards are the things that are going to achieve getting you things like uh, Orbit and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, I was expecting maybe something a bit more daunting. Um than that, but seeing that, fairly reassured that uh, this isn't going to be a nightmare. But I mean, look at that, that's just lovely. It's the, the whole space race, reaching for the stars, um, without going into the realms of science fiction, I think there's there's an awful lot of excitement and interest to be had there. Plus, you've got that little bit of learning, a little bit of real history of what's going on there too. Be quite interesting to see amongst the cards uh, that come out in this, if, uh, as has been the case, we see anything about the uh, women that were particularly instrumental with the whole space program and stuff like that as well, does that uh, get represented in it too? So looking forward to trying this. I think this is one that rather than sitting down and trying to just simply do a little gameplay video or a little gameplay overview, I think this is one that I would enjoy actually getting a couple of games of in. And then hopefully we'll be able to come back to it and give us a little sort of run-through gameplay. But it'll be more coherent. I think once you've played a game like this, you kind of understand the flow and how everything connects better. And it'll probably make a bit more sense than sort of sitting there just arbitrarily saying, these things do this and these things do that and these things do that. And you kind of do them in that order. Be able to maybe talk about it with a bit more authority. But certainly one that uh, can't wait to get playing. So appreciate Bob letting us get a, a first look at that. And uh, maybe if that's one that's been uh, scratching at the back of your head thinking, ooh, I wonder. Now you've had a little look inside it, uh, you at least sort of know the level uh, of complexity that's presented there. And uh, that might give you a clue whether this is one for you. As ever, if uh, you find that at all interesting, give it a wee like. Give us a wee subscribe as well. We appreciate helping to build up the following for the channel. And we shall continue to try chucking out a little variety of things as and when we can. I think we've got a couple more unboxings in the pipeline as well. And I think we've got a couple of review ones coming up very shortly too. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. So taking five minutes to add a little bit of a postscript here. Probably not really five minutes. Um, since I have a time to sort of sit down and have a, a little bit of a, a deeper look at this because we were chatting about it last night in preparation for getting to play. So it seems fair to sort of be able to put across to you guys and girls and folks a little bit more about what the gameplay sort of maintains. So as I said, we've got uh, the Earth and it has kind of the worker placement stations. You'll have two types of workers. You'll have your engineers and your administrative. And whilst you'll have both of those for the Soviets and for the USA, if you're playing a four player game, you're kind of vying for those spaces because each one can only occupy one. So if you place your uh, administrator on it, then you've blocked that space for your opposing teammate and your own teammate to be able to use it as well. It's a little bit of a balance between resource gathering and building a, an engine, a deck builder as well. So you will get, pardon me, you'll be gathering resources. Round discs will be temporary resources. You'll be seeking to try and convert those into long-term permanent resources, which then become the square tokens. All the while you're also vying to collect uh, cards that you can play through to achieve mission objectives. So you'll be trying to get those and technologies that allow you to complete missions and then that's where that race across the board is to get those hexagonal kind of tiles down to show that you've completed 
X challenge, with the main goal, of course, being to land on the moon for those extra victory points that that awards you as well. One of the other things that I was very pleased to see, because we did get a chance to go through the cards, there's a range of cards, artwork and whatnot, all lovely in them all, but indeed, as I mentioned in the video, very pleased to see that Catherine Johnson uh, is there as one of the cards representing the key role uh, that was played uh, by women in the uh, space missions. So there we go. That's it. Just a little quick uh, postscript uh, to clarify that and hopefully you're seeing the picture of the board and whatnot there as well that helps sort of uh, clarify what we're talking about. Thanks again. Bye-bye.